You know what that means, y'all? It's servicing time to the big boom. So, during the winter time and just during any times when it's rough, you know, we like to pull the boat out and then to do some servicing to it. If, it. if it's inside the boat, you know, fixing something that may have broke or whatever, or if it's something to the motors. Most times it's something to the motors. So, when we went out on the swordfish trip on the way out, we were about 60 miles out and all of a sudden the outside motor just the rpms just raced up and i was like oh boy that ain't good so we turned the motor and it smelled like burnt gear oil and the lower unit on that one was toasted and and it's just part of something that is lower units will eventually go out over time and so i'm running some used motors right now on the boat and this those lower units that i had on here they're just worn out but um so gear cases aren't ex aren't cheap either so no new lower unit is about fifty five hundred dollars so i was doing the um going back and figuring out how many gear cases i've went through this summer and i've actually went through a lot i think i went through around six or seven and so i've been thankful enough to be able to use a lot of spares that we've had at the marina that are old but i think just from them being old they just spoke put some under immense pressure and stuff so luckily the guy i bought the motors from brian frazen he's a um, he has a ton of old and used use reusable parts and he luckily had a lower unit that i could get ready to go and um i just traded him out a 25 inch shaft for a 30 inch shaft and he's gonna try to fix one up for me but he always has anything everything i need so if i ever need to be like hey man I need something you know i call him up and he either has it or i gotta find somebody else but most times he's the, he has and he's been really easy to work with with the new motors and stuff so but today we're doing a complete service since that lower unit went out i thought that was indicating a sign that to go ahead and change the gear oil and all the lower units so we're gonna do i'm gonna show you how i do a gear oil um replacement and then um, I'll show you what I'm going to replace on the motors for just a normal, typical service. And so I get, the reason why I got to do a lot of servicing to the boat is I run my boat farther and more than anybody pretty much that this fishes their boat for fun or recreational. And so we go through hours like crazy on these motors. And um, most times we don't have to re replace like filters or like the, you know, like, impellers and stuff on lower units most times it's just fluid changing so you don't want to be running motors with old oil whenever we're running 180 miles out or it's just going to be a recipe for disaster so we're gonna i'm gonna show you how i do just a typical service to my boat and this is all i'm going to show you the pricing on everything and show you why i gotta charge what i gotta charge and really it sounds like i don't even charge enough for how much we spend on this expenses in the charter business and that's why most times if you're charter captain and you're first getting into it most times people just do inshore charters because it's not that bad of expenses and most times to charge 500 bucks then you may only have a maximum most times 50 dollars to 100 dollars in expenses and us running offshore boats i could lose a gear case like i did the other day and have to buy one even a used one could be three to four thousand dollars and then you just lost all your money that you made that day so you know it's something that i love and have a passion for it may not be the best business for making a ton of money but it's what i like doing so i wanted to show you guys you know what's the other part of my job and it's not just being a good fisherman it's also knowing how your equipment works and know how to take care of all your equipment and so luckily i've been chartering for about three years and i know a pretty good amount about this style of uh, mercury now you know i've seen just about every problem just about on these motors so whenever we do have a problem when we're on the water you know sometimes i can just figure it out and get it fixed back in us going in 10 minutes span to where we don't have to cancel our trip so it's good to know how your motors are and pretty much everything on your motors 
if you're an offshore captain inshore captain you know there's less stress on the motors maybe your motors might be running for a couple hours maximum throughout the day but my engines are running non-stop the whole trip for 12 to 10 hours so i get way more hours and way more wear on my motors than anybody who's fishing inshore so first i got the gear oil drained out as i was putting on that that new lower unit over there I went ahead and drained the uh, gear oil out of my lower unit. So this one looked a little dark, as you can see. You know, that's a good indication. It's just burned oil, it's time to replace it. But this one came out and looks a little milky and that indicates that there's probably a little hairline leak in water from some somewhere around a seal or something. And it's not ba that bad at, right now, but the next time if I was to drain this and a lot of water came out, then that indicates that I need to probably replace the seal and I've had to do it before with Wyatt. But now that I got the, the fluid drained out, I'm gonna put some new gear oil in it. And um, that's simple as we're gonna just screw this onto the bottom one and then pump it up until it comes out the top hole, the vent hole. All right, y'all, so on these lower units, this is your draining hole and then this is your venting hole. And so first you wanna take this one out and then remove this top one. Now it let the gear oil to start streaming out. So I'm gonna just take a 10 millimeter ratchet. Go ahead and take this half inch off that I was using earlier. now we got the old gear loop draining out and that that looks pretty good um so what you're really wanting to look for and in to indicate if your lower unit is going out is if you start seeing some little metal shavings if you start seeing little metal shavings your loading unit is probably going to go out very soon maybe the next trip so um, it's always good to be looking out for anything like that and might save you the hassle of getting Sito to have to tow you back in But now that we're gonna let this one drain out. I'm gonna go ahead and put the new gear lube in To the other two that are ready to go So I'm just gonna screw the little fitting into there so here at the marina we got a nice little pump to pump it in but now if you wanted to get do it on your own they sell these little hand pumps that you can get but to give you, give you an idea on how much it is just to get uh, new fluid in the lower units it's probably about thirty dollars worth of gear lube in each mo motor so i'm about to do all four of these so 30 times four is $120 worth of just gear lube. And so, you know, I get a little bit of a discount, it being mercury, but it still costs money. And I have to do this probably every 10 to 15 trips, but realistically, I should probably be doing it every like five to eight, just because of how I have old gear cases and they like to have good, nice fluid. It always helps, but I'm just gonna keep pumping it until I see it come out of that top hole. And that will indicate to me that it's full. And then we'll put the plugs back in it. So we just keep pumping it slow. That way you're not forcing it out too fast. There it comes out a little bit. So we'll get the plugs ready. So here's the little seals that we put on our plugs. And you gotta change these seals out each time you change out your fluid. And each one of these seals are four, four dollars a piece. So my cost on these would be probably just over half that, but still, there's two seals per lower unit, and that means about five dollars a lower unit on seals. 
So about another $20 for just the seals on these lower units. So you just put that on, it's like a washer on these things, but it keeps the fluid from allowing water or allowing the fluid to escape the lower unit. It's very important that you put new ones of these on and you take the old ones off. So. There you go, that one's done. It's it's ready to get the propeller back on there. And that lower unit is now serviced and ready for the next trip. So I'm gonna do the same to this other lower unit. And then the same to that middle lower unit. The outside lower unit is done already. And then once we get done with these lower units, then we'll hop in the boat and we gotta change some oil filters, fuel and water separator filters, and some other different fuel filters on the motors. And we'll also be changing the oil out on these motors too so stay tuned for that all right now so there you have it all the lower unit parts of these motors get that cleaned up a little bit they are ready so now that we got the lower units part done we're gonna go ahead and bust the oil drain holes on the motors, bust those loose and drain all the oil out. That way we can put some new oil filters, new oil, and then we'll get in the boat and change out the fuel filters. But that'll definitely help the motors just their life, you know, last a lot longer having that fresh fluid in them. So there you go. That's the lower units right there though. All right, y'all, so this right here is the oil drain hole, the drain plug. So taking this out will drain all your oil out. There she goes right there. We gotta try to make it land in the hole. That's why you wanna do this on some asphalt. <laughs> God, look at the wind killing it. But that will make a mess if you're not on some asphalt or some dirt because the wind is not nice to these oil. So we'll set that right there. And then we gotta drain the other four too. All right, so here is the new seals right here to go on the plugs. You gotta have one of these for each motor. And so, Retail price is about $10, and my price is a little bit, probably a little bit over half. So, for me, it's about, almost about $20 for just these little seals. But they're important, they keep the oil from coming out. So, to give you guys an idea on what the oil costs, this is the uh, oil that Mercury wants me to use in especially 350s. And retail cost is $71 so each motor takes about two gallons of oil so four times two is eight and then eight times seven is 56 so it's a lot of, a lot of money of oil right there all right y'all so we got the whole lower part of the motors done we got the plugs back in and now we're putting new oil filters on each motor the filters actually aren't that expensive, about $13, $14 a piece. And so I pulled the two off and put two new ones on there. And um, the old ones are right down there. But we got all the new oil up here. We got the new inline fuel filters. See how they're about $18 a piece. And those go right down there. And that's for the fuel line that's an extra filter on the motors to help keep the motors from getting bad fuel there's all our dirty oil down there just wasted so we put it all in a big old drum to see if a company will come pick it up and they kind of haul it off and i guess they use it for something but 
Yep, so we, I got, what, eight gallons of oil I got to put in these motors. So, we're going to get to it. Put pressure pulling. These ones are on there tight to get it off. Sometimes these filters are on there so tight where you're almost damaging the, the old one to get the new one on. But it's coming. There it goes. There it goes. It's freed up now. Take that off. Pop the new one out. Take this old one off. Here's the old one. And then slide this new one on. It's not really that hard at all. Changing the filters isn't really the hard part. It's just the amount of time it takes to do this service, and especially to a boat this size. It takes a while. But there's that one. And you just got to hand tight it to put it on there because that seal will eventually make it to where there's a lot of pressure and it holds really tight. So. There's how to change the filter and I got those two done and we'll do this other one and then we'll do these inline filters and I'll show you those are real easy too. They just snap right in. Alright y'all so I got all the inline filters changed and so what you want to do is you want to take and see the little red tabs on both ends of that filter. Take a little flathead and you push those red tabs in and that releases the filter and there's little this quick locking mechanisms on those little hoses and so you want to make sure that that fatter end of that filter is on the, the back side so that's real easy to just push on and push off and so I got them all installed and now I'm about to put the motor oil back in the top of each of these and so most times when you're doing an oil change uh, they'll take both the two gallons and um, sometimes they'll take a little bit less a little bit more but you just, I usually put one and three quarters of the other one, um, of the other gallon in one motor, give it a few minutes, do the next one, and then check that one and see what your level is at then and see if you got to add a little bit. Um, but I go ahead and do the oil that way I can get the motors back buttoned up. And then we got to do one more uh, filter that's in the floor in the boat. They call it the um, onboard fuel and water separator so that one's a pretty important one that's the main one that catches all the water that goes to the motors before you know it gets into the into the motors but um so yeah we're getting we're i'm gaining on it we're getting it close so we'll see i'm gonna try to get it done before dark it's about four o'clock and we got softball tonight so getting it done we're in here and these are the fuel and water separators and I've already pulled one off right here. So you gotta drain them first with this little nipple right here. And then after you drain it, you wanna close it cause more gas will come in after you start pulling it off. And then mine have these little sensors right here that will tell me if I got water in the fuel or not. Um, so you gotta unplug that. And then now you gotta twist this off. So let's see. This thing is, but you want to twist the whole thing off and then you get out of the boat and then you take this part off of this and you save the, the bulb. See how it fills back up with fuel? And you gotta dump the rest out. There, and then we gotta go take those back up to the shop and then change them out and then put them back on all right y'all so i just got the rest of the boat serviced up so we put the filters back on there and we've got the oil in there took the levels they're all good so that's pretty much a complete um normal service for me you know there's definitely a services where we'll like do spark plugs and then we'll do flywheel belts and then like the little pulleys on them 
and then also we'll do like stuff on a lower unit more like the impeller and there's seals around it but those are more whenever you get a lot of wear or like if you haven't used a boat in a while then those would be you know things that you would do but us using the boat a ton we're just trying to make sure we have good fluid and good filters so that's pretty much what we took care of today but the last step in, in order to finish your service and it's a satisfying step is you go onto your simran here i'll show you and you go so you, you're we're on our uh, mercury page right here where you'd look at your motors and you hit the mercury emblem you hit more you hit maintenance you hit maintenance life and right here earlier it was showing a little uh wrench to say that you know the motors need to be serviced so you just tap that and you hit reset on all them and it resets the life that way you know it'll give you a little alarm whenever the motors need to be serviced again um so it's a pretty nifty thing that uh the mercury and simrad do to work together to make it just one one step easier so but um overall you know i get a lot of discounts on all the uh the parts and pieces to do it and also you know i'm I'm saving money on the labor fee in order to get your boat serviced and still not only change fluids and filters on the boat and it still costs me around like seven to eight hundred bucks and so this is something I gotta do almost every two to three weeks depending on how busy I am and how many trips we run so it is a costly and one of the cons about offshore chartering but it's worth it you know every 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 penny you say or you spend to try to save or expand the life in your motors is going to be probably 10 times the pennies that you save in the long run so don't ever look at servicing or the um the expense to to try to keep your motors nice as a bad thing try to keep it going as you know every time we're spending money this way that it's a good thing we're going to be you know making this the life of our motors overall better because the more you neglect them the more you let them sit and not do any maintenance or checkups or even just checking the oil every time you go out the more it's going to cost you and i've learned by experience already by using the world cat right there it had suzuki's on it the first time and i neglected checking the oil and eventually we blew a power head and i I believe it's because I didn't have enough oil or I didn't look at the oil so often as I do with these. But, um, so I hope this video helps you and I hope it was interesting. You know, it's just the other side of a captain's life that most people don't really see and no, most people don't even understand. And they just think that us captains running these offshore trips are just rolling in it, but really we're not rolling in it. And there is a ton of expense everywhere in the charter business sides.